One use of animal models is to examine mechanisms by which alcohol might damage the embryo and fetus. No one is postulating that all of the effects seen following prenatal alcohol exposure are the result of a single mechanism. Rather, alcohol can influence development via a number of both direct and indirect mechanisms. Alcohol can alter the proliferation, migration, differentiation and cell survival of neuronal cells. Alcohol can also disrupt the development of glial cells, leading to alterations in cell signaling and myelination. Alcohol may act on the cell membrane. For example, alcohol can disturb membrane fluidity, which can affect cell adhesion, migration and cell communication. Prenatal alcohol can also have effects on glutamate receptors and GABA receptors. Prenatal alcohol can also act on intracellular messengers. For example, alcohol can decrease or increase intracellular calcium. An optimal level of intracellular calcium is necessary for normal outgrowth of neuronal fibers. Yet, despite this multitude of possible mechanisms, not all neuronal cell populations are equally affected by prenatal alcohol. One of the challenges for alcohol researchers is to determine why some cells are resistant whereas others are relatively vulnerable to prenatal alcohol. Ethanol seems to alter cell responses to molecules that regulate neuronal proliferation, migration, and differentiation. One interesting mechanism involves L1 and other cell adhesion molecules. These are essential for normal human nervous system development. L1 and other cell adhesion molecules guide neuronal migration and tract formation during nervous system development and mutations in the gene for L1 result in brain malformations. Scientists recently recognized that children born with L1 mutations exhibit mental retardation, spastic gait, and a variety of brain malformations including enlarged ventricles, which is the hydrocephalus, and agenesis of the corpus callosum. Noting that retardation, hydrocephalus, and agenesis of the corpus callosum also occur in FAS, Michael Charnas and colleagues asked whether alcohol inhibits the adhesiveness of cells bearing the L1 molecule. L cells, which are mouse fibroblasts, were engineered to express the human gene for the cell adhesion molecule L1. These are the three slides labeled L1 transfected. The cells were allowed to aggregate by gentle shaking for 30 minutes. Control cells, in the leftmost picture, form few clusters of adherent cells. Cells transfected with human L1, cell adhesion molecule aggregate much more than control cells. The second picture from the left shows this aggregation, the white clumps, when alcohol is not added to the system. The right two pictures show a dose-dependent decrease in aggregation when ethanol is added to the medium. This increase in cell adhesion is inhibited by ethanol in a dose-dependent manner. Ethanol seems to alter cell responses to molecules that regulate neuronal proliferation, migration, and differentiation. FAS is only the tip of the iceberg in terms of outcomes. In fact, only a minority, which is 10 to 40 percent, of the children of chronic alcoholic women are diagnosed with FAS. What makes some individuals more susceptible than others? What are the risk factors associated with prenatal alcohol exposure? There are a number of factors that may contribute to increased risk to the adverse effects of prenatal alcohol. First, the higher the dose of alcohol, the greater the likelihood that the child will exhibit fetal alcohol effects. The pattern of exposure is also important. Both human and animal studies have found that binge drinking, which is drinking a large amount of alcohol in a short period of time, which produces high blood alcohol levels, is more damaging to the fetus than chronic alcohol exposure that produces lower blood alcohol levels. Thus, peak blood alcohol level may be an important factor. In addition, the developmental timing of alcohol exposure may influence the outcome. For example, the facial features associated with prenatal alcohol treatment appear to be related to alcohol exposure during the first trimester. Obviously, as different organs undergo development at different times, when the embryo or fetus is exposed to alcohol is going to be important in determining the outcome. 
the brain undergoes a very prolonged developmental course and therefore, may be susceptible to fetal alcohol effects throughout gestation. In addition, genetic factors, nutritional factors, parity, and synergistic reaction with other drugs may influence the effects of prenatal alcohol exposure. It is important to realize that some fetal alcohol effects might occur even before a woman realizes she is pregnant. Very little work has been done in these two areas. In terms of the treatment of FAS children, basically the individual's symptoms appear to be treated without regard to the etiology. The data on stimulants for this group of children is mixed. The animal data indicates that the stimulants should not be very effective in children. However, there are data showing that some of the FAS children with ADHD do indeed respond favorably to stimulant medication. There is some interesting work using animal models showing the effectiveness of early motor training and that will be discussed shortly. There are also data showing that an intensive, case management approach works very well in preventing women from having additional children with drug and or alcohol exposure. One important area of treatment is using motor training to compensate for some of the deficits resulting from prenatal alcohol. Motor deficits, balance problems, and gait anomalies are common in children with FAS. Complex motor training can mitigate the effects of developmental alcohol exposure on motor coordination and on cerebellar structure. Shown here is the parallel bar motor task, which measures the rat's balance and fine motor coordination. The graphs illustrate the number of slips or falls on the parallel bars, an indicator of motor dysfunction. Subjects in the inactive condition, labeled as IC, did not receive motor training. Subjects in the motor control group, labeled as MC and not shown on the graph, were exercised on a runway, and subjects in the rehabilitative condition, labeled as RC, were trained on a complex motor skill task for 20 days. As you can see, ethanol exposed subjects, labeled as AE, that did not receive motor training were impaired on this task, slipping with greater frequency compared to controls, labeled as GC and SC. In contrast, complex motor training significantly improved motor performance in all groups on this task, including the performance of ethanol-treated subjects. In fact, there was no difference in performance among the ethanol-exposed and control groups following this rehabilitative conditioning. Consistent with this behavioral change, complex motor training increases the number of synapses per cerebellar per kind cell in both ethanol-treated and control subjects. A finding that indicates that the brain is still plastic and amenable to behavioral interventions even after the alcohol insult is complete. Also, these data provide evidence that behavioral interventions may successfully reduce the severity of fetal alcohol effects. This is a program ongoing in Seattle and which has been replicated in other communities. It began in 1991 to test the efficacy of an intensive, long-term paraprofessional advocacy with high-risk mothers who abused alcohol or drugs during pregnancy. Women became involved when they give birth to a child who was exposed to alcohol or drugs prenatally. They received intensive interaction with a case worker who acts as an advocate, getting them in touch with appropriate services. The results are impressive with fewer subsequent children born exposed to alcohol or drugs, reduced foster care placement and a reduction in the dependence of welfare. Other positive outcomes are an increase in family planning and child well-being. Fetal alcohol syndrome is a devastating developmental disorder that affects children born to women who abuse alcohol during pregnancy. Although FAS is entirely preventable, and in spite of our increasing knowledge about the effects of prenatal alcohol exposure, children continue to be born exposed to high amounts of alcohol. Its consequences affect the individual, the family, and society. Its costs are tremendous, both personally and financially. Effective treatment and prevention strategies must be developed and made available.